YT Studios in Lexington. This is Kentucky Newsmakers with Bill Bryant. Good morning. Hope you're enjoying your weekend and hope you had a wonderful Christmas holiday. I'm Bill Bryant. Later, the Better Business Bureau's Heather Clary talks about your rights as a consumer when it comes to returning those gifts and redeeming gift cards and some of the scams that are going around as well. That's shortly, but first, Lexington's brand new police chief, he'll be taking over in January, is here. Mark Barnard is not new to the force. In fact, he spent 28 years on the beat and has moved up within the division where he currently heads up investigations. Bernard was the Unanimous choice of a search committee that recommended him to Lexington Mayor Jim Gray. In addition to working in several areas of the Division of Police, Chief Barnard has a master's degree in criminal justice from Eastern Kentucky University. He takes over the department as police continue to deal with shootings in this city and when policing methods around the country have led to protests and discussions, a challenging time. Chief Barnard, welcome. Appreciate you for coming in. Well, thank you for having me. I and, appreciate uh, it. Congratulations. Uh, how do you feel about the opportunity to lead an organization that you have been a part of for almost 30 years. You know, I, I was I was talking to some people earlier in the day and it's been such an honor and a privilege to work in a profession that I, I really am passionate about and to be part of the Lexington Police Department for so long. And then to work up through the agency and then finally get to this point and when it was afforded me the opportunity to be able to apply for it and then have the committee look at it and the mayor look at it and say yes you're the person to lead the agency uh, I'm very fortunate very blessed with it and I'm, I'm very excited about our agency because we have a wonderful group of officers. Will that time on the department and uh, the, your knowledge of Lexington specifically be an asset to the department? I hope so. You know, I, I'm a Lexingtonian. I've been here for over 30 years. I've been 28 years on the agency and 20 of that in management. Uh, I've seen things that have worked in the past and things that haven't worked. Uh, I'm very positive about our community. I love it. My daughters, I tell you, when, when your children grow up and they move away and they say, man, i really like to come back and come to Lexington, then you've got to be excited about your city. We've got a lot of revitalization going downtown. We've got a lot of new stores and industry coming into Lexington. So for Lexington, it's an exciting period of time. I'm excited to be part of it. What will be your top priorities as police chief? Well, right now is finding out and listening to everything the community has to say. Somebody was asking me, what's the new direction that you're going, how you're going to head the agency? Well, really, Lexington decides that because I think we have this tremendous foundation of leadership built into our agency. Uh, we look at everyone can take everyone else's place. So much dynamics are going on in the country today and how that affects Lexington. I think we have to be situational and decide how we take the next step. So Lexington will dictate to us what changes we need to make, but I think we're in a great position right now. Let's talk about those uh, trends you allude to in the nation. Uh, uh, some might say this is a very difficult time to be taking over as a police chief. It, it is. I have not seen in my 28 years some of the discourse that's been going on and the assassination of two officers in New York. Um, and, you know, it's very dear to our hearts. I mean, because you're talking about the people that you see in the grocery store, that you go to church with, or you see outside. Those are the people that are putting on the badge and the uniform every night when you're going to sleep to be the guardian for your city. Uh, and I hope our agency is, is living up to our expectations. I think we are. There's always room and constant improvement in evaluating that. But we have really well trained, really well educated, dedicated officers that really love their jobs and what they're doing and I hope our community supports them. Will it be a challenge to uh, continue to recruit uh, good officers given the environment? Is it a difficult time to go out and say uh, to sell the idea of a career in policing right now? I think so. I think it is difficult. I think though when you see opportunities arise from conflicts you have to take advantage of those opportunities so even though it's going to be difficult it's going to help us better in the long run because we're going to understand how to sell what we do and what we are is a public service organization and I say Lexington's different than a lot of police agencies because we consider ourselves a quality of life organization not just an enforcement agency we're very community oriented policing in that model uh, so we're very interactive with our community so I hope it's not just us recruiting. I hope it's our partners, it's our community leaders. I hope you're recruiting because you know it. I hope everyone goes out and says, look, this is a good place to work and it's a good uh, community to serve in. You speak of community policing. Uh, do police officers have to be more willing to get to know uh, the people in the areas they patrol? 
I think we do. I think we have to get out. It's, it's much easier when you know someone than when you don't. It's much easier to interact with people. I think the, the biggest thing that we'll look at is our interactions with our community partners and interactions with our citizens and how we do that. And one of the studies just showed it wasn't the lawfulness of the interaction with the officer, but the perception of how they were treated. I think we train, we're aware of that, and I think we train in that manner. So our officers are really, really important on personal interactions, and I think we'll continue. You told us in an interview this past summer that shootings and many crimes in the community are not as random as they may appear. Uh, what would you have citizens in Lexington know about their safety? Well, I think we'll go back and we'll look at all the violent crimes that we've had, and we discussed that earlier. I think you recently saw a case where uh, it was reported as a home invasion, and then when you're looking at the victim, the victim had some grow operations going on in the house. I think the average Lexingtonian is very safe in our community. I think when you look at the numbers, uh, when crime stats, our numbers indicate that. I think we're down 8% or 0.8%, almost 1% down in comparison to last year. Uh, I think there's a lot of room for improvement, but I think we're headed in the right direction. And I think the Lexingtonians that walk out, that go to our city, that are out doing things, have to feel and should feel safe. You've headed up investigations. Is it difficult to get witnesses to uh, come forward? I think we're in that era again. I think it's, we have to build a trust with the witnesses that say, I'm protected and I'm safe, and we have to have that relationship. So. We're facing a culture right now that is a very closed culture in society with some of the crimes that we're facing right now. So it's up to us to bridge that culture and say the best thing is to come forward with the information than not to. Your thoughts on body cameras, will that make a big difference? Uh, are there also some things that, uh, uh, that it could create some uh, risk for? I think body cameras are good. I don't think they're the solution, but I think they're part of the solution. So when people ask me about body cameras, I'm all for them. I think they're a great tool, but they just record the interaction. So we have to be prepared and trained before that interaction occurs, how to treat people with dignity and respect, how to use the uh, proper use of force. And I think the cameras record those. Right now, I think all we have to do is adjust our training. We're looking at two different versions of the cameras now uh, and implementing those. Now, there's a cost associated with technology. I mean, it, it's very expensive because we have to keep that information for court purposes later on. But I think in our society right now, we're in a, what the CSI effect, crime scene effect, that everybody wants to see the crime happen. They want a video recording. They want to actually see it instead of being able to visualize it through testimony. So. We have to face those trends. That's one of the things that we're going to be looking at is how to counteract those trends, how to better document and do our interactions. Despite a task force in the city, the heroin numbers continue to trend upward. The uh, state legislature uh, now, it looks like uh, in, a, in a bipartisan effort, will attempt to address this in some way. Uh, do you support uh, tougher laws on heroin? I do, but let me say the heroin issue, when it came to Lexington, we as a staff recognized because we started seeing some of the overdose reports coming in. Uh, we realized then it wasn't just only a law enforcement issue because there was part of the illegal drugs coming in, but we realized then at that time it was more of a public safety health issue. So we had this task force that came in and the public health department came and looked at it and we decided, one, how can we do our part for law enforcement, but how do we start saving people? Because we're going to have people that are addicted to narcotics. We're going to have people that are overdosing on heroin. The question is, we do our part of the investigation, and we allow the task force and other people work on the legislature and then work on the rescue and the victims. I know you wanted to make the point that uh, this is going to take a team, and you're uh, prepared to lead a team. Is it also helpful that uh, your supervisor, the uh, new public safety commissioner, is the immediate former chief uh, who knows the needs of the police department? Well, I think the first thing in public safety is you have to have stabilization. So Chief Baston moving to public safety commissioner, and me accepting the position as chief, we have a pretty good team in place that where we can bounce ideas and go off each other. We don't stray away from what we're doing because we think we were doing it correctly. We got new council people coming in, the mayor's in for a second term, so having some foundation in public safety, I think, will help bridge that gap. Appreciate you coming in uh, right after your appointment. We, uh, we're <laughs> glad to have you with it. us. Thank All right, you. congratulations again. Thank you. And we hope you'll keep it here on WKYT and Kentucky Newsmakers, the BBB on your rights as a consumer and some of the latest scams that are out there as we head toward a new year. Coming up on WKYT.
Welcome back to Kentucky Newsmakers here on WKYT. As you unwrap those gifts and determine what fits and what doesn't or how to spend those gift cards, there are a few things to know. And the scammers take no holidays. They're using new technology to fool unsuspecting people who answer their phones, uh, phone calls or their emails. Heather Clary is here with that and some advice for those trying to settle debts and get a clean start in the brand new year as well. She's with the Better Business Bureau. It's good to have you. Thanks good to uh, be for here. coming Thank in. You. Well, a lot of folks are doing uh, refunds or exchanges mm -hmm. right now. And uh, do consumers have a right to return something that doesn't fit or uh, doesn't, uh, you know, isn't what they wanted? Well, if something doesn't work, you know, there's a whole different implied warranty issue that applies there. But a lot of stores relax their policy somewhat. Uh, many stores have already relaxed policies. But what we want people to understand is stores are allowed to set their own refund and exchange policies, whether it's something online or the bricks and mortar store. And uh, it's a good idea to look at that if you're shopping ahead of time to look and see what it is. But of course, if you've received the gift, um, sometimes if they say you got to have a receipt or you won't get any mm -hmm. cash, you got to have a receipt. Otherwise, you're going to get just store credit or something like that. So just look and see what it is. And um, sometimes the stores try to make it as easy as possible yeah. for you around holiday time. For competitive reasons. Uh, most of oh, them need sure, to be uh, sure. yeah, uh, pretty careful with that. But, but you <laughs> say that really there's no law that says uh, this is the way you have to handle returns. No, um, they can set what they want. Some people say 30 days out, we'll give you a cash refund. If it's 60 days later, we're only going to give you store credit. If it's after 90 days, forget it. Or if you don't have a, a receipt at all, uh, and, and it matters what it is, they usually have it posted at the, at the customer service desk or something like that. So just take a look at it and watch the calendar <clears throat> because you don't want too much time to pass. You don't want to go out the day after Christmas, fine, but don't wait too long so that yeah. you don't get an opportunity. And also keep in mind, there might be restocking fees for some items you order, uh, CDs, DVDs, some electronics. There might be a, a restocking fee involved there, so don't be surprised if that hits you. Meaning they might tack on uh, 3 or 4 $5? Well, 20% oh. some places, 15%. It depends on the retailer. A lot of people uh, put those gift cards, you know, in a drawer, and mm -hmm. it's, it's all nice, and, oh, this, this will come in handy That's free someday. Money. For stores. Right. Yeah. And they have every intention of getting right back to them, but it doesn't happen. And you say um, there are not necessarily a lot of protections about that over the long haul. There's, there's one law that says they, can, they have to honor them for... Federal law yeah. says those gift cards cannot expire for five years. And I believe another part of the law indicates that they can't add on any non-usage fees, dormancy fees, till at least a year has passed. However, another thing comes into play. We have heard of people receiving gift cards and then a business goes out of business or bankrupt. And then that leaves you with a worthless piece of plastic. So you may not want to wait too long or consider the financial condition of the company that you've received it from. It's a well-established chain. I mean, it can happen to any kind of business. So just kind of keep that in mind and, and don't forget them. And if you decide to unload them on one of those websites that you can buy and sell, be careful about those sites because some of them can actually, uh, if you trade with somebody, you might not get the full value. So check those businesses out with the BBB before getting involved with those. Heather, do you notice any trend between whether, you know, those local Mom and pop shops uh, do a, a better job of, uh, of, of taking care of these customer questions, or do the major retailers have the same sort of it obligation? It depends. I mean, a lot of places have excellent customer service. Some places, if you're just shopping online, you're going to get all your information there. So just uh, be uh, persistent, but but firm and, and polite because nobody's trying to, nobody wants to cause a problem if you run into a situation. If you need some assistance with something, please call the BBB. That's what we're there for, to try to help open the lines of communication between consumers and businesses and try to help resolve issues. A lot of folks are hoping to, uh, you know, settle their debts, get a fresh start in mm -hmm. a brand new year, and there is no shortage of uh, people offering to assist with that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> what should we know about that? I can tell you that we hear from folks every day at the Better Business Bureau who have just gotten online and look up debt relief, or they get things in the mail that they didn't even ask for that says we can help you get rid of your debt well that sounds great it took you a while to build up that debt it's going to take a while to get it get rid of it no one can erase your bad credit we want to make that clear we also want people to understand that some of these businesses can be very helpful but some can also do you more harm than good um, <clears throat> some of them have been known to pile up the money that you pay them and not pay your creditors until they have enough that they think can make a settlement. Meantime, your credit continues to tank. So we advise people, check out a business with the Better Business Bureau before handing over that information. These businesses that do debt negotiation are required by law to be registered with the Attorney General's Office in Frankfurt so that they know all about who they are. So check those things out.
out before handing over that information. This goes for student loans as well. That's a new cottage industry we're hearing about, people wanting to settle those kinds of loans. And what's that all about? Well, people, are, you'll mean, hear people the ads, you see with big websites, and, and you'll see, oh, we can, uh, you might qualify to have your loan forgiven, your student loan forgiven. Well, that sounds pretty tempting if you've racked up twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000. But what people need to understand is that there are very limited parameters that you can qualify for. And just check with the Department of Education on that. Sometimes you don't need a middleman to help you with this stuff and pay them extra. And sometimes they just want to get you into debt consolidation, which isn't really what you one at all. You mm -hmm. just want to try and get those things paid down yourself the best way you can. So what you're doing is that you're maintaining a, a huge database on businesses. You yes. know the complaints that have come in yes. and you uh, are free to uh, give that information out. Same time you'll do some investigation if it's oh, necessary. Yes, yes. And, and we have uh, actually BBB.org is the national BBB website so all the Better Business Bureaus around the nation. I mean the internet has made everything global. And so are the scams, and so is the information that's available to the public. And we want people to understand we can help them with that before they start handing over information, seeing stuff on the Internet. Don't always believe everything you see or hear on your phone or see in your mailbox. Check it out first, and anybody who tries to discourage you from that is probably not anybody that has your best interests at heart. Why is it that uh, so many people today try to masquerade as the government? You know, you get, you get that yellow envelope, <coughs> it looks so official, it will say yes. something like, uh, you know, a customer to open it once. Uh, or the phone calls are the worst. We've seen a huge trend in the past year of scare tactics being used by con artists masquerading as the government. Medicare, they'll call the senior citizens. Oh, your, your card's going to expire unless you hand over your information. The IRS, that's been the big one all year long, all around the nation. Someone calling, claiming to be with the IRS, you owe money, uh, you're behind, and we're going to arrest you if you don't call and pay now. That one's going on as we speak. It's not the IRS, folks. <laughs> they are not calling you. They're warning about it. The government doesn't call you on the phone. They might say they're with the Federal Trade Commission. Some people even say they're associated with the Better Business Bureau and trying to give you an award or a prize and then want money. Of course, the BBB is not a government agency, but I mean, they'll use the agency names that they think might impress upon you that you might believe this is really them. Free government grant scams, that's going around too. We're with the Treasury. We're selecting people to receive a free grant. Not so, folks. They just want to clean out your bank account instead of depositing it in there. You have qualified for a huge loan, you know. Yeah, uh, all kind kinds of things. Thing. Yeah. If it sounds too good to be true, it is. And if they want personal information, you know, hang up. Tell them to go away. You're not going to deal with them. And have the scammers become more adept and in, in, in persistent in, in using technology to go after unsuspecting Yeah, folks? While, while technology makes our lives easier, it also makes it easier for the scam artists. Uh, we've seen a huge round of people complaining about phone calls coming in and their caller ID reflects their own phone number and name. That's called spoofing. Sometimes they'll spoof a number that looks like it's from Washington, D.C. They have equipment that allows them to do this so that you might be more tempted to answer the phone. As far as the spoofing your own name and number, just don't answer that. It's just some con artist wanting to do Lord knows what, and you can't block those calls. That's one of the reasons they do it. So you can't it, block your own number. It looks like a call that's coming from yourself. Yeah, or your neighbor, or or your church. I mean, we've heard it all. And once you find out it's not, it's one of those automated things. Just hang up. People want to give whoever's on the other end of the line down the road and push one or two to get removed. Just hang up mm -hmm. or ignore the call entirely. It's the best thing to do. Earlier in the year, you had mentioned something called the one ring scam. That started our year. Uh, it was all over the nation. Your phone would. Ring once. Well, a lot of people are like, oh, who tried to call me? And they'll pick up their phone and call it back. You end up calling Jamaica or the Dominican Republic or who knows. It's tricking you into calling them, possibly putting some sorts of charges on your phone. Don't always be tempted. I mean, I know we're all attached to our phones. I just, if I don't recognize a number, I just let it ring. If it's important, they'll leave a message. If they don't, half the time I Google the number and find out it was some scam anyway. So it makes life easier. So many of our major retailers have been hit uh, uh, with uh, some kind of a uh, security breach. Breach of some yes. sort this uh, summer and fall, and uh, we learn of more of them, of them all the time. And it seems as you head into the holidays, they've become more prevalent. Um, how do you protect yourself? Well, a lot of the things we're seeing is, of course, watch your bank accounts. And all these retailers that have had this happen indicate to you, hey, this has happened. Watch your bank account. We're offering credit monitoring, that type of thing, if you wish to take advantage of that. Where it really comes tricky is when people are getting phishing scams in their email boxes. Uh, we're seeing a round of them just this month. Uh, look like they're from Target, from Costco, from Walmart, places you may shop. A lot of people shop at these places. You may have ordered gifts from there or are returning something. 
it could be a con artist that has gotten a hold of your email through a hacking incident and then sent you these te these these fake emails telling you to click on a link it just unloads a virus on your computer so don't always assume that something in there is for real that's in your email box especially if it looks like someone you've done business with most of them are not going to ask you to give personal information log into your account yourself on the website or call if you think there's a problem because it could very well be a virus how many of these operate from overseas who knows? I mean, there are so many of them. Technology allows them to hide behind Internet servers. I mean, some of them are in Russia. They're in the Caribbean, uh, in, in Canada. I mean, it's all over the place. And that's the thing. When the con artists run these scams and you fall for it, there's generally little or nothing you can do if you've just handed over money. For instance, if you use a credit card in some transactions, you can usually have the uh, opportunity by law to dispute uh, anything that was stolen or misrepresented and look at your own uh, credit card terms and conditions. However, um, some people will use cash. They'll just give a debit card. They'll get a green dot money pack card, which is the way that the con artists like to use that. It's one of those reloadable cards, just like cash. You've won a prize, you've got to pay the taxes, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, don't ever give cash or anything like that over the phone to someone because you're not going to get it back. And in some cases, they'll send you a check saying, uh, buy some green dot cards, right? Or well, they'll, they'll send you a check telling you it's time to, uh, you've won a prize, and this is to help cover your taxes. So cash mm -hmm. it and wire this money. Or this is for a mystery shopping job you've been selected for. Go and wire the money, get it out of the yeah. bank, wire it somewhere. If a check shows up for a thousand, two thousand dollars, you're not expecting it's not going to be. It's going to be. It's going to bounce as high as the day is long. I want to ask you more about that. We'll take yeah. a break here. Secret shoppers. Uh, yeah, sort of a new area of concern. We are back. Heather Clary is with us on WKYT's Kentucky Newsmakers, and we're back in a moment. Welcome back to WKYT's Kentucky Newsmakers. We're continuing to discuss uh, really the scams uh, du jour uh, with uh, Heather Clare with the Better Business Bureau. And uh, let's uh, continue and talk about it. Here we are now in wintertime, and there are some seasonal specific scams. Heather, one of them is that uh, you might get a call saying your power is going to be cut off, even though you've paid your bill. Exactly. We've seen this one year after year, and it can hit businesses as well. So if you own a business, it could very well hit you because if you have to close your doors because you have no heat, <laughs> or if you're at your home and you get this call, oh my gosh, I didn't pay the heat, we're going to freeze, it's not your utility. What they'll do is call and say they're with Kentucky Utilities or Old Dominion or whoever you have, your Louisville Gas and Electric. You didn't pay, we're going to cut you off within the hour unless you pay this bill. And you can do that with a credit card or a green dot money pack reloadable card. Yeah, of course. And if you fall for that, you're just going to be giving money to a con artist because so, they don't operate that way. The, the, the utility companies. They, they'll give you plenty of time to settle it with them. So in that case, contact the utility. Yes, and they've warned about these before as well, and especially with cold weather being here, and if you are having trouble paying your bills, they all have programs to help you work out payments and whatnot, so don't believe the con artists on the phone. It's not really them at all. It's not really the utility company. Alright, let's talk about these secret shoppers, and you said this is really hitting all ages, where a, a check comes in the mail, maybe you've responded to an email or yeah. something, that, uh, and you get this uh, big check a couple of thousand dollars maybe, and they say, go out and, uh, and shop and report the results to us. Right, and mystery shopping is a legitimate industry, and a lot of retailers and, and corporations use that, but not in this manner. And a lot of people who are looking to make extra money to pay those holiday bills, this is not the way to do it. Getting online, finding something, or getting an email unsolicited. College students, senior citizens, we've heard from the gamut who've gotten these. And your first assignment is to test and report on how MoneyGram or Western Union operates. Take this check for $1,500, cash it. Your bank says it looks real. They give you the cash, you wire it, and then report on your experience. They'll even give you a form to fill out. Of course, keep your share of three or four hundred dollars. Well, the whole thing's a big scam. Uh, the check's going to bounce. You're going to have to pay back the bank. You've wired it to somebody offshore. You're not going to get that back. Legitimate mystery shopping operations do not hire people in that manner, and you certainly don't make that triple digit figure. Anybody who's done it will tell you they'll make, you know, twenty, forty, fifty dollars, maybe a little bit more doing one of those, but they'll never send you a check like that. Sight unseen. Think about it. They don't know you from Adam. Are you going to take a $2,000 check and do with it what they want you to do? So anybody can set up a website, so just be cautious about that. They're innovative, aren't they? Yes, they are. <laughs> uh, let's uh, let folks know, the Better Business Bureau is not a government agency. You right. work with a lot of government agencies. We do. Yeah. And we're glad to partner with those agencies, law enforcement on all levels, because while 
the folks out there are our eyes and ears and let us know about what's going on. We're able to pass it along to law enforcement who can sometimes take down some of these cons. Uh, we are a nonprofit organization. Uh, we have businesses all throughout central and eastern Kentucky in our 64 county service area that uh, support us through their accreditation fees. They've been selected to join the BBB. If your business wants to qualify, we can certainly see if you do to help us with our mission to make all our services available to the public for free and keep all of our dollars here in the economy spent with legitimate legitimate businesses and run out the con artists so it's all everybody wins <laughs> and if uh, people uh, need your services uh, and uh, they can contact you how we invite you to visit our website at bbb.org slash Lexington we're on Facebook and Twitter and you can call us at 1-800-866-6668 Monday through Friday you just never know what's next do you with these we uh, don't it's never <laughs> a dull day and we want you to call us please don't be embarrassed or anything we want to hear about it we're going to treat everyone very confidentially and with respect because you're helping us and we want to help others with the information you share with us and sometimes that first call that may be the call that uh, gets uh, the ball rolling it on, does uh, indeed this. so you can help us too Heather appreciate it very much thank you thank happy you. new year happy to you happy new year to you all and right. everyone here at KYT well, we appreciate that very much and we thank you for joining us for this edition of Kentucky Newsmakers Certainly hope you join us bright and early for WKYT this morning. We start at 4.30 with all the latest news, weather, traffic, sports, and of course mid-morning at 10 and on WKYT News at noon and throughout the day. And we hope you make it a good week ahead.